Hello everyone and welcome to my review of 999. I was I was about to say the full title, but I mean I know it, but I don't I don't remember in which order it's being said. You know, the persons or the hours or the doors, which one goes which? <laughs> Who can tell? Um, but yes, hello. This is me talking about um, 999 in reference to uh, the playthrough I just did, which you can check out on my channel. 41 episodes long. Little, little slower than the average YouTuber. A um, little bit of a slow gamer. Probably because we play like the whole thing on novel, I think is actually it, and not just because I suck at puzzles. <laughs> but yeah, if that interests you, that's on YouTube. Um, but either way, we're gonna be talking about it. If you haven't seen a review by me, um, they're nothing special. They're really informal, and they're usually just off the nose or off the cuff. Um, so. If I miss any topic, or you have, or I didn't touch on something, whatever, whatever, then I'll feel free to ask, and I will uh, respond when I see it. Um, but yeah, um, overall, great game. Um, Story-wise, you know, it's like it's a very popular genre. I feel like there's a lot of games. I mean, not even games, just stories like that. Like the escape room, group escape room thing going on. Um, but I'm definitely a enjoyer of that. So that was fun. Um, I think... Like, it, <laughs> it's hard for me to explain. Like, I think it is... It's, it's definitely well suited for its visual novel elements. Like, just, just because, again, it's a game where you have to do all the routes to complete the story um and that kind of just fits in with how like the, there's a lot of like technical stuff with the game that really fits well that can like be overlooked and just like meshes well with the game i don't like like i said before like i think like you know in visual novels usually i want to full clear and they make it so that you have to full clear so if you're starting to feel like it's a hassle um like, I didn't get the feeling that full clearing this game was a hassle because they kind of integrated it with the game itself, if you know what I mean. Like, it's very smooth in that regard. Um, the writing itself had a lot of cheeky jokes, um, mainly um, aimed at the Japanese audience, so I missed a lot of them. Or I was just, like, uneducated to get it. But, like, there's a lot of slit stuff. Like, um, in the finale, uh, Fafo one of the viewers here, um, informed me that the reason why, um, well, maybe not the full reason why, but you know how they use a lowercase Q on the final door? Um, apparently, it's also sort of a pun because 9 is also said as Q in Japan, so which is funny. Like, a lot of, I'm sure there's a lot that I just missed or you won't notice because you don't speak the Japanese language, which might, might take away a little bit, but like, there's definitely a lot of slick humor, and even if you don't speak Japanese, there's a lot of fun, fun moments, you know, some like on the nose, like heart, like you can miss it, but if you get it, it's like again slick. And then there's some more of the obvious stuff. A lot of the seven stuff for me was very funny, um, or like the flirtatious stuff with um, June and Clo. <laughs> June and Clover, um, June and Junpei and Junpei and Clover, um, basically a very good mood, despite it, um, being sort of a, I mean, I guess, like, it's definitely a more of a light-hearted mood in a, in a story that's not really light-hearted, which is a good thing, um, lots of, uh, I guess people would call, I don't know how you'd say it, pseudoscience, occulties kind of stuff, which I like. I'm always interested, you know, talk no Dan Gray's up. <laughs> but, um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, it's not like in the realm of sci-fi, but it kind of is. And I like it. I think I'm just bringing up a lot of these points because before I do a review video, I usually like just to take a quick peek at what other people think of, uh, a title online just to see like oh what's what's the meta do i need to do i need to follow anything include anything but i do see like a common um point of the game's writing is not that great and i like i kind of just disagree with that like 
like how slick it is, how fun the cliffhangers feel. Like obviously this game's a master at cliffhangers. The ending literally hits you with the cliffhanger into a fake and you're like, oh, they were just joking. Of course they were. There's no way they would end it without answering the questions. Then they hit you with another cliffhanger. But I wasn't even mad. It's not like... It's not like I felt unsatisfied. It honestly made me want to uh, just consume more of the game. Though there, And it is like a quality thing, right? Because there's definitely have been examples where literatures or games leave you on cliffhangers then you're just kind of like well that was a fun game but i don't know if i'm down to uh play the sequel or another game in this series just to figure out the other information but this one definitely i didn't have a problem with that and i also think people take the sciencey stuff a little too literally which i i just don't really know why like people getting annoyed at the sort of the fake science stuff like the even, like, the Ice Nine stuff, which isn't even real. And I think it's... I don't really know. <laughs> I don't get it, dude. It's a story. Who cares? But I think one of the main things is, and it's definitely a, a bigger topic I wanted to talk about, is um, the two modes. Because I honestly... I, I don't know. I can't speak for everyone. And I'm just making assumptions here. But I actually do think a majority of the people... Or not a majority, just a large chunk... Of people who didn't really like this story probably played on adventure mode i'm gonna say it as a novel enjoyer the superior version <laughs> no i'm joking but um but I, I i think adventure mode kind of is a little bad sometimes like okay obviously i'm not gonna Obviously, my opinion of adventure mode changed and the two modes in general, just because, again, like how they did it with the routes, they incorporated the modes of view in the story, which is super fucking cool. Again, a lot of technical ingenuity, making the game flow really well with the mechanics, etc, etc. But also, like, but like in general, I feel like a lot of the, maybe like, people who don't read visual novels or are more interested in the game elements will just keep it on adventure mode. And it just cuts out a lot of stuff that I feel like sometimes it isn't important, but sometimes can be. A great example of this is if you watch the acts ending with Clover, um, the scene with novel mode, like probably like 10 minutes when you're getting to like the climax of the ending. Very good scene, very emotional scene when Junpei's struggling, like, oh my god, everyone's dead, June's dead. I'm gonna die, but I can escape with Clover, so that's something. And he's just inner monologuing, struggling with his feelings, while Clover's slowly pushing him towards her. And when he finally reaches out, she chops off his arm and leaves him to die. And it was a great scene. And then you get the adventure mode where it's like, Junpei, uh, Junpei, uh, come on, Junpei, uh, Junpei, uh, Junpei? Clover slash thanks Junpei and then the scene ends it's literally like a minute long it's so bad <laughs> you just don't get any of the <laughs> it's actually like I'm not joking like if you compare the two scenes it's actually the drop in quality is actually like a roller coaster dude I think it's actually like horrible <laughs> um but yeah there's definitely moments like that where um if you read full adventure mode you're gonna miss a lot of like the flavor details that might make the moments more like just the writing better in general which i think you know not a game designer not a writer i think you definitely definitely you have to keep the two modes because i think the reveal at the end about the two modes is like just that good um um but i think maybe you should add a little bit, like, the adventure mode only shows dialogue, while the novel mode gives you, the, like, the whole shebang, like, descriptions, actions, and stuff. I think you should probably show, like, basic actions in, um, in adventure mode, and that would probably clean it up a lot. Like, in the Clover scene, I'm just gonna use that again. If they did that, you can be, like, you don't have to, like, go through Junpei's inner monologue, but you can, like, describe his, like, face turning pale, 
and like looking up at Clover, they're like slight, slight things like that and actually reaching out for her hand. Cause you know, they don't actually talk about that in the adventure mode. So it just seems like she slashed him. Um, stuff like that, I think might clean it up and make it flow a lot better. But I think, I honestly think that might be just why that might've been a hindrance to the experience, even though again, I read it all in novel, so I didn't really experience that at all. So I'm just kind of, kind of observing the situation of what happened and formulating my own ideas. But um, but yeah, I think I think the writing's good. Um, I think you could argue the plot holes, or not plot holes, the twists and stuff, which are technically plot holes until they're solved, isn't the greatest thing. But like. If it's so serious and if you had fun with the game, I don't really see a problem with that. Um, honestly, if I have to make a complaint <laughs> about the game, and this is my biggest thing about the game, is the freaking... The voice synchronization slash the dialogue stuff. Which basically means a character would talk... Because I use the Japanese voices, it's just my... Uh, just my way of doing things I usually listen to uh, a game or whatever's in their original intended voices um, no matter what it is I don't know I just I just roll with that no 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 um, no insult to anyone who enjoyed the dub um, but at least in the Japanese version there's a lot of times where they would say a line and then the text wouldn't scroll down so they're saying a whole line and then you click it, then it would just show the text without any speech, which is pretty annoying. Um, and it's even more annoying that you can't even like click again so you can see the full speech while the text is going because it will skip the, or it will skip the dialogue. So that's pretty bad. Also, some of the translation was kind of poor. <laughs> um, like, and I think it's mainly because I could be wrong about this since I didn't even really listen to the dub, but I think the translation is basically the dub. Like, it just reads as the dub would read. And they obviously made some creative choices for the dub, probably to be localized better, fit better with the localized audience. Which I mean, it made sense. I guess this is like the first time I've actually played a visual, n I mean, it's not a visual novel, but a game with visual novel elements that have two um languages so it's not really so i don't really know the norm but because of that when you actually play in the japanese language it it kind of makes the story weird like i'm not gonna lie first first death because the first route i went down was the yellow submarine route um and like when you see akane dead <laughs> and it's like a really dramatic scene and then like i'm like oh man i'm starting to feeling something and then jimpei just yells connie and then she's like jumpy <laughs> I can't with those names, dude. They, they just crack me up when they use it in emotional scenes. Especially because the Japanese voice actors are saying uh, their real names like Akane and Jun Junpei. But I, honestly, it didn't really deter me from the game at all. That's like my, my personal only problem with the game. Are some of the technical aspects in terms of synchronizing the voices and um, the dialogue choices. But... But yeah, now, now to the good part, besides all the other good stuff we were talking about. Um, she, actually, you know what? One more criticism. I think the file screen kind of sucked. <laughs> like, like, you would store notes in there, but I feel like you could have just, like, stored them in your inventory. I, don't, I, I feel like the file screen was just kind of there. Like, there's a bunch of help stuff, but... I've never used them because I think they're all like extremely basic um, instructions. And um, yeah, all you did with the file screen, I feel like could have just been done if you put a piece of paper in the inventory screen. I guess there's like bigger stuff, but like not really. <laughs> it's like more root specific. And if it's root specific, then just keep it in the inventory. But yeah, I thought the file screen was whatever. <laughs> Anyways, let's step back to the positives. Um, characters? I mean, vo should we do voice acting? 
I didn't really like. Hmm. I don't really have a scale like they do for voice acting in Higurashi. Um, I thought there were really good moments from Lotus, Junpei, Ace. I think those are my three favorites. And by good moments, I mean like the dramatic moments with screaming and stuff. I thought they performed the best, especially Ace. Like, a good example is Ace when he was in the flashback, when he was she's at seven for like rescuing the kids and stuff. I thought his insane voice sounded really cool. Um, Junpei has his good moments too, obviously. There's like a plethora you can pick out. I feel like Lotus does too. I guess it's hardest to say for Lotus. Maybe not. I guess Ace and Junpei are the standouts for my voice acting pits. Um, I do like Clover too, I guess, for voice acting. But now we're going to be talking about characters. So I've been thinking about this a lot. Like, who's my favorite characters? Um, we'll do the boys category first. Um, who's my favorite male character? It, it's actually not that hard of a choice for me. I, I don't know if this is a popular opinion, though. Um, but my favorite male character is Seven. I thought Seven was great. In the in my very first playthrough, I done with the submarine routes. I, I actually didn't really care for him too much, just as I had didn't have any interactions with him before going through the submarine stuff. Going through Door 2, I guess, is... A better way of putting it but you know post that th he just brings like a lot of humor a lot of chemistry good vibes with him i love his scenes with um lotus and clover in particular like their rivalry chemistry is just so cute and entertaining to watch um he's obviously a great guy maybe i don't know what junpei was alluding to at the end so, but um yeah i really liked seven <laughs> I think second place has to go to Junpei. Um, he's a fun protagonist. He made some lame jokes. You know I love my lame jokes. Um, there are a couple like moments where it's kind of annoying. I think most notably would be um, when he was interrogating Ace for the safe ending. Um, I thought it was kind of cringy. <laughs> like, ooh, him interviewing him and then him picking out ear rats from his ear, leaning against something. Like, I, I was like, okay, dude, calm down. Just expose the man already. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really like that. But otherwise, I think he was very fun. And I very fun character to follow around. Third place... Sort of a tough one. I think I'm going to give it to... Ace, <laughs> um, obviously one of the villains of the series. Um, it was kind of sketchy early on, but um, I think his switch into psycho mode, which I mean it's been done a lot, but it's also like I I'm a sucker for those kind of villains. I do like that stuff. Again, I liked his um flashback stuff. You know, telling me Ace doesn't have a sit design when he's in the flashbacks than year round. Um, I don't know, I like them as a villain. The next I would probably give it to Santa for his bat story probably being one of my favorites. I Oh wait, actually back to Ace. Like maybe one problem with him is um, I think, I could be wrong, but I do think, actually maybe not. I was thinking maybe that, does I understand him a bit? How his main motivation, even though he's like, He's shown to be like this evil CEO kind of guy, but his main motivation at the end was just trying to find a way to live a life and understand how people can live like, like not being hindered by his disability. I don't really know about the disability, if it's from birth, which I think it might be. Um, so rough stuff like that, you know, like he just wanted to experience a life where he's not hindered by that and I was gonna say like they didn't really do a good job of like making him too sympathetic but I think the fact that like they kind of joked memed on him at the end <laughs> with like and the tire ride probably means that that wasn't the point so I guess 
it's not really a criticism. But I guess that's also why I like Ace. I like that side of him. Adds a little more depth to the character. Um, but yeah, Santa has a really good backstory too, obviously. Very nice reveal. I, again, I would like to say if you haven't watched the playthrough, he was literally my first suspect before I hard shifted to you. Snake and Ace when they became obviously more suspicious, but um, yeah, I like Santa, kind of a edgy man. Before I mean edgy before he even was revealed as the as the zero guy, but yeah, Santa's cool. Then probably I would say Snake. Um, I know uh, forgot which I forgot who, but someone said Snake was their favorite. I like Snake. I just feel like because we got so much less of him, um, I just didn't feel as attached as I did with some of the other characters. Um, yeah. Then we have the ninth man. He's just a meme character, so who cares? Women? Women were... Or the girls? <laughs> I don't know why I shifted from boys to women, but... Um, the girl characters were a lot harder for me to rank, honestly, even though there's less. Um... But I think I'm going to give my favorite female character to uh, Clover. It was very close between Clover and Lotus. I just feel like near the end, Clover got so much more time than Lotus did. Which kind of pushed it over for me. In general, Lotus just didn't get enough time, I feel. But I liked Lotus. I, I know she might come off as annoying to others, but I really liked that uh, sassy personality. I thought it was fun. Um... Liked her design, no bully Lotus, because apparently she's wrinkly in her outfit, even though she looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, they both had great um, chemistry with most of the characters, especially Seven, which was fun to see. Even like good chemistry with Junpei. Clover was like, like I said before, very like flirty with Junpei. And Lotus had some good moments too. Then I'm gonna say June, you know. Again, if a character reaches, like, my least favorites, it doesn't mean they're bad at in, like, any raid. I think June's was definitely a fun character, especially near the beginning with all those meme -y, like, stuff <laughs> with the mummy and whatever. Um, that, was, that was always fun to me. So I like June, but I just like the other two better. Yeah, there you go for characters. OSTs, I don't know their names, but um, the OST wasn't like too strong for me in this game. Probably because I don't remember mo most of the melodies, which means it wasn't as strong. But I do love me the the theme that they always used like in the bad endings, like when Jinpei got stabbed in both of the ones, the submarine and just the one where he got stabbed underneath. In the, in the floor where Lotus was. Um, you know, the dun, dun, da, 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 <laughs> sound. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I guess I will be listening to the music, though, while putting it into this video. But yeah, OST was alright, but nothing amazing for me. Art. I like the art. Um, character designs, I mean, you know I like Lotus's. Um, Clover's was adorable. I like her puffy hair. June was, I mean, most of them were good. I don't think there was a design I really didn't like. Um, maybe Santa <laughs> looked a little silly for me. But, like, really it wasn't anything anything I actively disliked seeing or whatever. Even Kaboot, what's his name? Ninth Man. Um, I liked him, dude. Honestly, my hair is becoming puffy like his, because... I haven't taken a haircut in a couple months. Um, is that about it? I think that's it. Um, yeah, I think we went through everything I wanted to talk about. Um, right? Yeah, right. So, yeah, and then if you have any, want any additional comments slash, or you have questions, whatever topics, then uh, you can leave them here and I will be happy to answer them and then if you haven't watched it you can check out the playthrough on the channel and if you're wondering Aiden when's the next uh when's Virtue's last something oh, I forgot the name 
coming out. Well, earliest a couple months, latest a couple years. <laughs> Probably not a couple years. Like maybe 2022. But who knows? That's that's a long way. You never know what happens in life. So, but yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this. Thank you for watching. Um, if you, again, if you're new to the channel, feel free to check out the channel. There might be some other stuff you might enjoy. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't. It uh, it gives me a nice little ego boost, which also boosts the quality of the videos. You know, so uh, if you want better videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. But thanks for watching, seriously, and hopefully you have a great day slash night. Bye.